Nowadays there's a variety of approaches for animating 2D characters in games such as bone-based animation and acid sheets. However, the most common method is the usage of sprite sheets, which is supported by Unreal Engine 5 right out of the box. Sprite sheets will first and foremost be used for animated characters, however they can also be used for effects such as explosions and also for animated game objects. In this episode I'll explain in detail how we can extract frames from sprite sheets and create flipbooks from them in Unreal Engine 5. A sprite sheet will usually be a PNG file which you can just drag into the content drawer. Then we need to right click it and apply paper 2D texture settings. Right click again and select extract sprites. This editor window will assist us in extracting our sprites from the sheet. You can right click and drag in the viewport to change the position. And you can also scroll with the mouse wheel to get a better look at your sprites. In simple terms, our goal is to make all of these yellow boxes the same size and have one animation frame in each box. By default, the sprite extract mode is set to auto. However, this rarely works out as you can see. Set the sprite extract mode to grid. Now we need to set the cell width and height. If the artist did a good job at setting up the sprite sheet, this is pretty easy. We just have to count the amount of columns and divide the width value by that. In this case we have 10 columns and we can just do our calculation right here. For the height we count the amount of rows and do the same thing. In this case we have 9 rows, so we divide the value by 9. Then we just have to click on extract, which will output all of our frames. However, you'll also often come across sprite sheets where the process isn't as easy. Either because they were made with a specific game engine in mind or because the artist made a mistake. For this warrior sheet for example, if we do the same thing, there's a 1 pixel gap under the foot, which isn't ideal. We can set the spacing Y to 1 to create a 1 pixel gap. Then we also need to make the cell height 1 smaller to account for the gap. And now everything aligns perfectly. The sprite sheet which I used in my 2D top-down tutorial cost me a lot of headaches, so it's perfect for showing off advanced settings of the sprite extraction editor. This sheet combines the frames of three different characters and also has arrow icons we don't need. If we just do the same thing again for setting up our width and height, it looks alright at first glance. However, if you zoom in, you can see that the character slides up or down in the box. Since we only want to use the last three rows, we can set num cells y to 3. We can then also use margin to ignore the top part. In this case, 189 turned out to be the correct value after some trial and error. In this case, I also had to apply a spacing of 1 to X and spacing of 6 to Y. You can see that the top two rows are now matching perfectly, however the last row still doesn't match. But we've reached the limit of what we can do in this editor window. Now there is a way in which we can slide up the single sprites for the last row which I showed in my top-down tutorial. However, if you're dealing with sprite sheets with this many issues, it's actually a lot faster to just edit these in a sprite or a similar software instead of wasting your time with all of these different settings. So if you work with sprite sheets on a regular basis, I do definitely recommend that you invest a bit of time and money and learn at least the basics of using a pixel art software. Okay, so once you've successfully extracted the sprites, you should see something similar to this. The next step is creating flipbooks. Flipbooks in Unreal Engine are pretty similar to flipbooks in real life. It's basically just a collection of images or sprites that play one after another to create the illusion of movement. We now want to select all the sprites of a certain animation. The first one will usually be the idle animation. Click the first frame, hold shift and then click the last frame to select all of them at the same time. Then right click and create flipbook. You can then proceed to do that for all of the other sprites. Even though this process is manageable and the default way of doing it, if you have to do this for a lot of characters or make changes later on, it can be quite annoying. The next video releasing will be an advanced tutorial about importing sprite sheets with a JSON file. If you open up a flipbook asset, you can see some settings here. The most important one is frames per second, which determines how fast the animation plays. Some assets will come with a recommended value, but other times you'll just have to use some trial and error to see what feels right. You can then simply drag your flipbook into the level. However, in most cases, you'll end up using them with a blueprint, like I'm doing here for this character. 
In a future episode we'll go into more detail about this and I'll show you how you can create a simple 2D character with flipbooks. There we'll also go over the difference between using base paper 2D or paper ZD for handling animation states. So see you in the next episode. As always thanks to my patrons for enabling me to create this video series.